Hello friends, this video on conservation of plants and animals part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to talk about the endangered animals. Now since we are talking about extinction, so there are animals which are nearing extinction. So they have not become extinct, they still exist but their numbers are reducing so fast that they are at higher risk of becoming extinct. Some of the examples are the Bengal tiger. So you can actually count the number of tigers you have which are left over. The Asian elephant, snow leopard, black rhino, chimpanzee, blue whale. These are some of the examples of endangered animals because their numbers are diminishing very fast. And that's why now whatever number of animals are being left over, uh, we are all trying our best to conserve them so that if possible to increase their number by reproduction but we do not really want to lose them because as i mentioned before we do not encourage extinction of animals earth is has a rich diversity and we should try our best to maintain the diversity so what would happen if species become extinct let us look at some of the harmful effects first of all it is going to disturb the food chain so one of the harmful effects is it disturbs the food chain. How it affects the food chain? Food chain is something which talks about how different organisms are dependent on others to obtain their food. For example, there are animals like cows and goats which directly depend on plants for their food. There are other animals like lions and tigers which depend on cows and buffaloes for their food. So that way organisms depend on each other for food. So if we take an example of a food chain, so let us take this simple example, grass which is being eaten up by deer, which is being eaten up by lion. So this is a very simple example. Now let us suppose what will happen if the deer becomes extinct. So if all the deers, they end and there are no more deers existing. In that case, what will happen? The food chain will get disturbed because the amount of grass will increase a lot and the lions will not have anything to eat. So that's how the food chain will get disturbed. Ecosystem gets affected because when we talk about ecosystem, we actually talk about the entire system of plants, animals, microorganisms, soil, water, air, everything present there. Now, if suddenly one of the components reduces very fast, for example, when we talk about ecosystem, we talk about the biotic components, that is the living components plus the abiotic components, which are the non-living components. Now, what will happen if in the biotic components you have plants, animals, microorganisms, so everything falls under uh, biotic components. Now, if any of these plants or animals or microbes, they become extinct, they vanish, so the entire balance of ecosystem will also get affected. If extinction continues, there will be a day when no life form would exist on earth. So it is like the example of an aquarium. So let us suppose you have an aquarium in your house and there are say 20 to 30 fishes inside that aquarium. Now what happens is the number of fishes start reducing in number. Now, as, as the number keeps on reducing, what will happen over a longer period of time? Now, gradually over a longer period of time, the number of fishes might even reduce to zero, right? Now, when the number of fishes reduce to zero, what happens to your aquarium? So, your aquarium just remains as a glass box with no living organism inside it. Now, once all the fishes die, what do we do? In aquarium, at least you have an option of adding fishes inside it. So that again, the number of fishes will increase. But in a real ecosystem or in, in reality, in earth, if the species become extinct, we cannot add the species back to the environment. For example, the dinosaurs have become extinct. Can we bring back the dinosaurs? We can't. So all that is possible by us is to control the extinction because once they become extinct, we cannot bring them back. And if gradually many species start becoming extinct, a day will come when all the life forms will vanish and life will not exist on earth. And I don't think any of us want that to happen.
So I hope with this it is clear that how do extinctions affect us because many of us might feel that okay if tigers are becoming extinct let them become extinct why are we bothered we are living happily and anyways the time there was a risk with the tiger that the tiger would have eaten us so it is good that they have become extinct but that is not the case. So when you look at the broader picture you see that even tigers were playing a very important role in our ecosystem in our environment so if they are becoming extinct it is an indirect message to us that someday even we might become extinct. So therefore it is extremely required and it is good to maintain the balance between the various components of the ecosystem. So knowing all these it is better for us to understand that let us all save the endangered species because the endangered species they have already reached at a very low number. So they are already less in number so let us try to save them at least now. So how can we save the endangered species? Stop hunting and killing them. Because by doing that, we are actually reducing their number all the more. Protect their habitat because if we harm their habitat, so if we actually cut down the entire forest, in that case also, even though we do not kill the animal, the animal is going to die on its own because it needs that specific environment for its survival. Do not spoil their surrounding environment. Now, it is not only the trees and the animal which needs to be protected. It is also other animals which are present in its surrounding. Also, the environment like let us suppose wherever you have um, a, a national park where you have a lot of endangered species. Now, if you start creating a lot of air pollution, a lot of water pollution in that area, what will happen? That is going to have an impact on the animals. The animals might die due to some disease caused by the polluted air or water. So we need to ensure that the surrounding environment is also appropriate for the survival of the animals. So these are some of the ways by which we can save the endangered species. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.